Where I left off on this one, I was super tired. I replaced all the chips in it to give it a quick, hey, how you doing? And uh, nothing happened. So I was tired and I'm not feel like dealing with it. So today I'm gonna look at the other one. This is the Rev 4 of that series. And the CPU in the whole area sucks. So I'm just gonna pop the CPU out. Oh God. Pop the CPU out. And we're gonna... Good God almighty. We're gonna have to put a socket in it. Oh, she is crunchy. Whew. Oh, all right. So, story of my life. That looks good. Nothing wrong there. Yep, great. We're green up to about here. The resistor pack. The lights don't show it a lot, but it's green on this side too. That doesn't mean that's the cause of it, but that's a good probability. So, Lorena, break her back. That lets me see inside the socket for potential screwdriver damage, which we have. See that Triforce right there? It may not be brakes, but that is from going in here and going lift, and lift, and I twist on the edge here. Crack it open, crack it open. This is a stick in and poke. Or it's just ancient. And take a gander here. Socket. Uh, the resistor is there. Okay, Revision 4's have a little resistor. CPU. Yeah, I sanded that I think. I don't remember. Uh, I'm gonna add some solder. Why is this... Again, we have another wire mod job. You've seen me do it before. We're gonna use the Heiko solder sucker clone uh, after I add some solder ancient stuff into something that the solder sucker gun can bite on okay so that is the add this is the remove we're gonna go in and suck her out Well, it looks like it's just squishing around. It's not. I'm going to have to clean this cartridge out when I'm done. This row. Because the tone's getting ready to change any second. Okay, so that is one and done. Okay, on to the next side after I reinsert this cartridge. I think it's a big cartridge. It should hold more than that. It really depends on how much you put into the back of it. So let me get the other side out real quick. Now, what I do is I have my glasses totally clogged up with fingerprints. That makes viewing so much better. I then take my finger and I kind of go like this to break any remaining little solder bits away. Yeah, it mars the crap out of your skin, but you know, my fingers are known for their just perfection. There we go. A couple pins that just did not want to release. Boy, she was crusty. Look at that. Wee. All right. Let's flip her over and see what kind of crap we got now. We got some love. Yeah, pins are boogered and I'm sure vias are tanked. That's, that's great. All right, so this one's gonna be more fun than normal because pretty much every ROM line is shattered. God damn it! Take a look at this. In between the CPU and the ROM, you're thinking, eh, not too shabby. See all those little black marks? It's like oozied all over the place. Up in here, it's just... This thing's gonna look like a spaghetti noodle if I can get her going again. And dog hair is free. <sighs> yeah, that sucks so bad. 
I hate Rev Force. I freaking hate them. They don't like you. I don't like you. When they go, they freaking just, they're like a Rev, a 16 megahertz Amiga 3000. 16's always decimated beyond repair. Look, this is, this is toast all the way over to the freaking clock crystals. God almighty. I'm convinced you guys are just buying these in the dump. I'm convinced of it. And most of the repairs I do aren't even for Patreons. They're just, yeah. All right, so I'm going to go in fiberglass pen. Right here. There's a little bubble of battery blackness right here. That little dot is all over the place. You see them here, 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 here. Pepper, pepper, pepper. All down in here. It's, what is this, a Rev uh, 500 Plus or the battery barfs right near Gary? Same scenario. All these deadlines. These are Agnes and freaking different ROM lines and a lot of Agnes stuff right here that come off the 1 through 6. Oh god, 64 over here runs down around these points and we're broke. It's broke. I can see it here and I can tell you it's broken right here too. That's that's great. That's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. Shoot. So I'm probably gonna have to remove the resistor packs also. Just to take a peek. Pin number Uno. It's gonna go to the second pin RP nine hundred, but I'm not worried about that. ROM pin two. Hey, we got lucky. That's one. And I repeat that process to pin two. That goes to the pin over here. So two to that one. Hey, we're getting lucky so far. You never know. Just because she's ugly doesn't mean uh, she's going to be broke. Four. Oh, my goodness. We're hanging on. That's CPU side, at least. Continue with the one, two, three, four, five. That's the resistor. I'm going up through the resistor pack. This one's an Agnes line. That's going to go all the way to Gary, so. So if it goes to Gary, it's going to Agnes. So, as you can see, I have to do this. All of these. You don't want to go in with your new socket all Barney badass until you get this traced out because you'll just be taking it back out. Seven. That's that little booger right there. That's a Gary 2 and an Agnes. Wow, holy Christmas. Miracles never cease. I'm worried about these. So what I'm doing is I put one pin on the CPU. Not worried about the resistor pack tracer. I go to its final destination. Yes, it runs through Agnes, but it also goes to Gary. That's got it. And we just keep on continuing up this whole side. And then I gotta do the ROM lines because the ROM lines are what's going across here. So this one is Gary NCIA. And I got 1320 ohm. But that's how I do it. I don't official count. I just say, okay, eight from the top, seven from the top, whatever. Okay, so I have gone past this, but this side talks to the ROM on this busted stuff here. So all these peppered lines here always go over to over here, this signal. That one's still holding 600 ohms even though it has continuity, which this is all the bar flan. So far, I'm, I'm telling you, this is like a miracle. I have a physical break. These are pretty much close, I mean, they're close. Well, this VCC rail, this is a 5 volt rail right here above your battery holes. And uh, you'll see on this recreation there's only two. There's actually two positives and one negative. This one. I need the one with the components panel. Alright, because now if I say options, components panel, I have all of the components listed over here of what values or what. So, let me do it open and take this file and get rid of it. There. Alright, that way I'm not using the wrong ones all the time. So now if I scroll down, I will have a three-post battery. There we go. Three-post battery. And I can clearly see better the lines in the motherboard because it actually has a motherboard this was designed on. There's a photo of a motherboard that these circuits are laid out. Oh, I got it if I stabbed the corner of the 
Raya. Grant, let's test your buddy. Because you're all in the crap field here. Dead. Alright. So, these guys here go to the RAM controller chips over here. And in reality of life, that is little tiny dots here going to these two chips here. One of these is really scored up. And there's an, actually a break in the ring, like has happened on most of the four, row four boards. These two guys here, they're the second and fourth pin down of that uh, U540 RAM controller. And this one, you can see some copper here, because the ring is broke, so I was touching here and getting a beat, but not here. So I'm at the drag solder this. This one was okay after some yuck. So I need to go through these pins because they're not always directly related to the ROMs, but they are the ones that are on the booger lines. So that you just spend a little bit of time on these dots. Sometimes you get lost when you're testing one of these. You're like, oh, okay, we can see it doesn't go to the ROM, it doesn't go to the Kickstart, it doesn't go to the CPU, but it goes to like Agnes or something else where you got to spend a few minutes just doing that. This is another reason why I hate Rev 4s. A Rev 4 board suffers from dry rot. I don't know why, maybe it was the plastic used on the sockets. And I know I'm going to have to do an Agnes socket, and I hate this board. I hate Rev 4s. You understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? This socket is cracked on both ends. That happens because you stick a screwdriver in there, pop an Agnes out. Well, they dry rot, so when you touch them, <laughs> they literally just fall apart. Now, it's getting harder here, but as you can see... It's a piece of crap. And that's, that's great. So, I, I'll just pretend I didn't see that. Do the thing. I'm going to add solder. Pull her out. Let's get her out. Proper tool for this is a PLCC extractor. Now that I have broken the other pin off. And it gets underneath the chip. And you kind of just squeeze. And pull the chip out. We can really get a taste on this. So... Yeah, was it making contact? I don't know. Probably, maybe. I could just do like this and hope for the best. But no, they dry rot like so bad you can just touch them and they kind of just crack all to hell. Literally, just I'm just touching it and it's just disintegrating. Whoops. And this side's a little tighter. No, no it isn't. It's just literally... Coming off, oh geez, it was coming off in my hands. There you go. New Agnes socket installed, but you get the idea. There's something growing in the corner there. See that? Hey, these holes, if you don't have a PLCC extractor and you are not lazy enough to pull your board out, you can take like a pencil or something and stick her through there. Oh! This has the same exact scratches as many of the other boards I have. I wonder where that's from. Great. Let's pull that battery post out. Oh, God. Alright, battery holes are clean. Let's uh, hit it with a fiberglass pin see if I can get anything back to put the battery on. Agnes is out. I gotta get this big, massive molten ball solder out of there. Let that cool off. Now, just the green solder mask is coming off. Starting to bubble up a lot. There we go. No soldering gun required. Agnes itself, the area looks, looks Okay, quick uh, little bit and a uh, wiper, but now, alcohol is not a cleaner. That's why I use just the ammonia Windex. Ammonia Windex, isn't that going to etch everything? Yes, that's the idea, but it'll clean it, and then I can neutralize all that crap with IPA. But see how it's clean now? You can see the line right around the resistor pack or where the SCUS line starts. So, at least we got all this cleaned up now. 
you can still see a lot of grossness right here I haven't that's my fiberglass pen work I haven't really got to this but I'm trying to clean this up and the Agnes I just spent the last five or six minutes filing with a fiberglass pen on this I had a fingernail file around here somewhere but I don't know I might have to use a steel brush I'm gonna put this on the table it's a little rough but hey it gets the job done let's see what happens turn about energize there we go yellow screen green screen Oh no, don't be ram, you son of a bitch. To confirm that, we're gonna go in with the VGA cable on the adapter and just see if it's the same thing. Because the Agnes is probably dead, who knows? Nope. That was a reboot. So that is a start. That's a something. Nope, now we got a green. Son of a bitch. Low. High and blank. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 and a long one. That's the exact same thing the other Rev4 had when it had Bilgerd RAM everywhere. I am not replacing 32 RAM chips that I do not have, nor should I have to. I'm going to look at the comparators and I'm going to look at these 74 F245 PC chips, U540, U541, that blew out on me last time. So, with the green screen, Yep, that can only mean one thing. U540 and 54541, which is blinking as I clicked on it. These are, if I can remember correctly, what are they, 244, 245? 244. 244 is an, a transceiver, an Octobus transceiver with three states. Uh, it's either this way, nothing, or this way. Kind of like the buffers are on the Zoros over here, same thing. These, I call them buffers, they're octal transceivers with three state inputs, so it's uh, towards CPU, towards Zoro, or nothing. These RAM controllers are the same way. So 540, 541, octal bus with three state inputs. So it either talks to the RAM, does nothing, or gives it to the CPU. The best way for me to do this is to pin out so I'm still not 100% on this GBS board yet, just for my troubleshooting things. I'm still going to use the Amiga itself. All right, diagram. Diagram. UDS, LDS, OVL is okay. It means CIAs are talking. Check some ROM screen. One mega chip. Bada bing, bada ching. We need a simple ROM. This uh, low high. Looks good. I have this little funky stuff. All right, GBS to the rescue. So there you go, another Amiga's been saved, had dead ROM. Guess you're rocking 1.3 now, beggars can't be choosers, because that's all I got. All right, I'm running out of ROMs here. So this ROM, dead. This ROM, what well, is crusty. It is crusty on one end. I try to clean it up, let this run, just let it run. Fiberglass pen this ROM. We're going to extract the kickstart ROM. 1.3 that I know works. I'm just going to put it right there. This is the 2.0. 4. Low high. Low cleaning. It is alive. Diagram is mine. 1.3 we know works. And 2.0 now works. Me get test kit. Does it boot? Yay! All right. Switch to 50 hertz. How does that do, GBS? Can you do that? Not good. Okay. Let's go back to America. My mouse is working now. Audio. We know the audio works. I already tested it. Do we have a clock? Clock works. There's no battery in here. I need to test the Zorro bus. Programming flash. This is 3.2.2.1 Hotfix 2023 Hyperion Entertainment. I am a legal license holder because I have three, two, and you get all the updates when you register your thing. Here's mine right here. You get a CD key on your cellophane that I put mine on the inside there, and uh, I digitally registered it with Hyperion 
That way you can be entitled to your hot fixes and updates. And I own about 12 or 13 copies of 314, 32, because I have just a couple Amigas. Anywho, this is my ROM. There are many like it, but this one's mine. This will be my bench ROM where I even make a label for it. Okay, so programming succeeded. We got our ROM written. I'm putting this ROM, hopefully it works, in the, this Workbench 2 slot. Why? Just so I can double mouse button and uh, test the Zorro. Zorro bus is working. Cool bean. Uh, say continue and boot with nothing in the disk drive. I'll get the 47111 Hyperion Boing Ball. Bada bing. This GBS is actually looking very nice. Not so great when I got to do a lot of resolution changes, but once you get her dialed in, pretty good. I wonder if the GBS is component friendly. Let's see something. Whoops, a composite, you moron. Yeah. That's composite video on the slot in the back. So it's in black and white, but it's just to show you that it does function. This Amiga is now fully functional. So we have a Zorro, we have an Amiga, we have sound, we have a hair on my finger, CIA's Paula's, your mom. Everybody's good. You've seen them, you fix them before. Thank God I didn't have to do that RAM. We didn't have to do the tri-state octal bus mofos. RAM things, just, it was crusty. Awesome. So, I'm gonna put the 204 ROM back in. There we go. Crusty pins. So there we go. Owner CPU, new Agnes socket. Clean up the CPU. No wires needed on this one. At all. It looked like crap. I fiberglass penned everything clean. We got some bubbles in there. Got them out. I'm going to have some Sally Hansen fingernail polish on here. Any spots that I've opened up, we're going to cover back up so she's sealed for the future. So I'm sure you'll see this one on eBay probably, but that's how it goes. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.